Is your house on the market but not really getting shown? Or are you thinking about putting your house on the market and afraid of the traction that you might get? Y'all, there are things that agents might not be doing that would increase the traffic through your house. There are seven top reasons I want to share with you right after this. Welcome back. I'm Steve Reese, a realtor in the Oklahoma City area, specifically the town of Shawnee, just east of Tinker Air Force Base. I run the SoldOnShawnee.com real estate and community blog, and I'm deeply involved in the advocacy of your private property rights through the local, state, and national associations of realtors. And on this channel, I tell you everything you need to know about relocating to the Shawnee area, Oklahoma City, and beyond. The flurry of buyer activity over the past couple years has been bananas, am I right? And with that uh, activity, uh, we've not seen a normal market. In fact, uh, expectations are way out of hand, and we're just now seeing with the different balance in interest rates and more properties on the market, we're not quite in a buyer's market yet, but we're approaching a more normalized market. So I think you'll agree there are four perennial reasons why um, a house doesn't sell or doesn't get shown. It's priced too high. It needs to be staged. The location is bad or it's in poor condition. We've all heard this list before and your problem here may be that you could be working with an agent who's afraid to be honest with you. So I've come up with a list of top seven reasons why your house is not getting shown. One, your home isn't mapped properly in the multiple listing service. We have the ability to pinpoint your property on a map so that it shows up in all these search portals and on uh, mapping services. And many agents and many more home buyers use this tool to uh, locate where they want to buy. Remember that 95% or more of all home buyers are using online tools in their home search. If it's not mapped properly, you won't be found. Two, this is a biggie, y'all. Of course, all seven of these are biggies, but I think this is one of the biggest. Maybe I should have put it at the end of the list. Your photos are dreadful. You should expect only professional photography for your, your listing. Agents, out of being cheap or lazy or both, tend to take uh, videos and, and uh, photos using their, their iPhone or their, their droid. They take pretty good pictures, but they're not professional. They're not professionally edited and they suck. We've been in the market for the past couple of years where agents could get away with uh, using below average tools to attract buyers to their listings, but now the story is different. Agents should be, agents really should just be showing their, their true value in the process. So many times agents are using photos to be just making an inventory of the property. And that's not the point at all. Y'all, our multiple listing service here in the Oklahoma City area allows up to 50 photos of your home. If you're not seeing 50 photos of your home, there's more that your agent could be doing. I mean, if the, if the house is so small and there really isn't much to photograph, I can maybe see it. However, there are always opportunities to highlight different areas in the home. Maybe it's uh, an appliance that's a little unusual or uh, upscale, uh, something that is noteworthy. It might be um, some glass doorknobs that you want to highlight. Could be that you want to put in the floor plan. Y'all, Floor plans are uh, thought to be probably the second most interesting tool that a buyer uses to decide whether the home is the right fit for them. There are many opportunities to fill up those 50 photos on the multiple listing service. And those get spread out to all of the syndicators and websites where buyers are searching for properties every day. And when it comes to good photography, sometimes staging is a, an element in that. When you're talking about a vacant house, um, you can either load it in with furniture or there's virtual staging involved. 
Go to soldonshiny.com and search virtual staging to see what a difference that can make uh, for your photos. Buyers um, oftentimes, I mean, they, they like to see the space and be able to imagine everything, but sometimes that paradox of choice might cause a buyer to think, oh, I just can't imagine uh, how I would arrange my furniture in there, for instance, or what that room is used for. Virtual staging can sometimes set the stage for uh, defining exactly what that room is for and how nice it could be. Number three, the narrative or public remarks as we call them in the multiple listing service. They simply suck y'all. Listing agents have the opportunity to really showcase your listing through the public remarks. And sometimes they're just listing off the, the features of the house instead of the benefits to the buyer. <clears throat> this is uh, an area that's broadcast out to all these uh, syndicated websites and places where buyers are looking and it's an opportunity to tell a story. You all buyers are are many times buying particularly when they're buying it for themselves and not an investment. They're buying it based on an emotion and when they see a, a story that relates to them in the house they're more likely to feel a connection there and want to see it. Number four, the listing agent has a bad reputation in the realtor community. Agents and consumers can't risk having to deal with a jerk. Can we just say that? <laughs> and sometimes um, if there's a jerky realtor out there, people want to avoid that at all costs. Now, agents probably are not refusing to show a listing, but they're not going to work as hard to uh, get a buyer to work with that listing agent or that, that listing if the listing agent is a jerk. Is the listing agent local? Many times <clears throat> buyer's agents want to be able to work with somebody they know and trust. Um, if the agent is from out of town, they're not deeply involved in the community. They don't have an investment there or a reputation to uphold and it might be more difficult to work with somebody who, who's not local. Uh, listing a property is not just an online gig. It requires a, a lot of um, boots on the ground in the, in the neighborhood, in the community. It requires good relationships with the local lenders, the home inspectors, the title companies, all the things that help uh, make a transaction come together successfully. Furthermore, the Code of Ethics through our National Association of Realtors dictates that we operate within our area of expertise. For example, a realtor in the west side of Oklahoma City doing a one-off in Shawnee probably is operating outside their area of expertise, wouldn't you say? Number five, the buyer's agent can't get in the house. <laughs> you have to see it to sell it. Uh, we have an automated showing system through our multiple listing service that uh, makes it pretty easy for us to schedule showings, um, know when the availability is for the sellers, and um, make appointments for our buyer clients. If, an, uh, if a listing agent isn't using that, in, in our case right now, it's called showing time. If the listing agent that you're hiring or have hired doesn't use that, that's a red flag. That means that that agent either doesn't understand how to use the technology or they're simply not cooperating to the degree that they should be with their buyer's agents. Not using the showing service uh, given to us could put you um, at a disadvantage. Also, they could be using it for nefarious reasons, I hate to say, to try to attract people to come directly to them to buy it and then they would double in the transaction. That feels so dirty. Number six, the qualifications of your realtor. Y'all, being a good realtor isn't just how many transactions you've completed. There is a lot that goes into being knowledgeable, involved, and certainly caring for you, the consumer. Ask your agent about the professional designations and certifications they hold. Are they a CRS, Certified Residential Specialist? Have they completed the GRI? Are they a graduate of the Realtor Institute? Uh, there's the ABR, accredited buyer representatives, uh, there's sellers, uh, representative specialist, seller representation specialist, sounds right. Uh, a number of different things that uh, give them uh, just more tools in their tool belt, a lot more education, and certainly a better ability to serve you, the consumer. Ask them about their involvement in the associations of realtors. Are they volunteering their time to improve the industry, to improve the experience for the consumer? Are they just out there slinging lock boxes? Or are they actively participating in the advocacy to protect private property rights? Are they involved in our 
realtor party initiatives to improve the community, improve the experience for the consumers. There's so much more to a well-rounded professional than just opening doors and selling houses. We're at the final item, number seven. The buyer's broker commission might not be competitive. Now, while we can agree that there is no set amount for commission, we can agree that people are motivated by their paycheck and offering uh, more or at least competitive uh, an amount to uh, buyer's agents out there might make them work a little harder to uh, convince their buyer to, to select your home over another one. You definitely must be making that buyer's compensation part of your consultation with your listing agent when you meet with them. So that's it. You have my seven top reasons why your house might not be shown. And just to be completely transparent, I cover all of those in every seller consultation. And I'm open to all these questions that you might have regarding them and welcome your input. So if you have any questions, be sure to uh, put them down below in the comments or DM me or get a hold of me through any of the channels that are listed below. And I'm happy to visit with you. Y'all, thanks for watching and I look forward to spending time with you in my next video.